Um, I think it's a good word, allowing. Allowing or acceptance is a good word. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I read years ago that, I, that stuck with me somehow was about being man in the world, but not of the world. Mm. And that touched me as something, what an interesting challenge. I, being in the marketplace, not being in a yeah. cave in the Himalayas, meditating 24 hours a day, yeah. but living a life, but not being too caught up in the dramas of the world, or not being, yeah, not being too caught up, not being too, too trapped by the dramas of the world. Yeah. And that's exactly what I mean by the clean mirror. Yeah. <laughs> exactly that. Of course, the drama is going to happen all the time. When we leave the studio today, there'll be some dramas, just in travelling and whatever we have to do. Um, to be resistant to those, to, to fight them off, to worry about them, to, um, to, to deny them, is not necessary. It's all play. It's all spontaneous arisings and fallings and movements and they're all happening and we experience them but all the time this beingness this spontaneity of being is unfettered and untouched and I am that you mentioned earlier that you felt it might be easier for human beings for human beings if life was simpler mm. and actually life seems to get busier and more complex and yeah. we have all these wonderful inventions of computers and everything and even the telephone at home seems to do so many more things than it used to in the old days and it does seem to be a constant challenge to stay up with the, the world the, the way the world is expanding and of course that in a way reflects the way the universe is expanding mm. which is still an incredible rate gosh. things are things are moving at a pace aren't they gosh yeah i mean i who can say what's going on in Really, I mean, this, this project universe is um, utterly astounding, isn't it? We actually have no idea what's going on as little people. Even, um, even the wisest sage, um, the most intelligent, skillful person that you might interview, can only give you a story from their frame of reference. However sophisticated it might be, it can only be from their frame of reference. How do we know what the big picture is? You know, I, I was fascinated by that as a child and still am because the universe is utterly stunning. Um, I agree with you about the complexity of life and its accelerating rate. I don't know. Who can say why, where that's going? All you can say is it's happening. It is. So therefore, it, it must be right. Nothing can be wrong. It's right because it's happening. And we must respond to it. We have to. To deny it and run away from it is um, the road to nowhere. We have to respond to it and learn to integrate these authentic, spiritual um, uh, way of being and life amidst all of this chaos. Because so much of our spiritual heritage seems to come from the East mm. and our current lifestyle in the West is just so different. There is this almost interpretation and integration that's a really, and that's speeding up as well as an ongoing process. Yeah, so we have to, we have to adapt it, but not much. That's the point. The, the, the teaching is completely confident. This, this teaching of Atma Vichara that we mentioned is utterly confident. There's nothing ambiguous about it. It's not confused. It's completely confident and embedded in a long, long history. Of, um, of serious, authentic practice. So that it, at its essence, doesn't need to change at all. However, the language of it, its um, lineage is Eastern, is Indian, and is, is not of our culture, if you like. So it's helpful to have a little bit of um, adaptation to simply represent that authenticity in a way which is accessible to Western people, and that's what, that's what we're doing. What do you see as your challenges these days as leading your, as leading your center, your Yoga Living Center? Um, I'm, my challenge in that regard um, is to develop the model of what I am calling a ashram in the community. 
because, as we have said, the, the previous model was to retreat to the ashram, and I am attempting to bring the full power of what an ashram is into the community so that people don't need a residential center, you don't go away somewhere, you live your life, but you have the connection and support of a community. Because in yoga, it's, um, for thousands of years, yoga has said the way that you support yourself in your practice is through four things. Satcham, yogam, guram, and sangam. And these things mean uh, the truth. There is a truth. Um, yogam means practice. Guram means the teacher and the teachings. And sangam means community. So through these through these things, a person is enabled to pursue a spiritual practice, regardless of their lifestyle. And in fact, they're encouraged to uh, adopt an ordinary, an ordinary lifestyle. Carry on, carry on with your life in the world. Accept it, um, get into it, be fascinated by it. But at the same time, you can answer this yearning in the heart, which many people feel and want. And you can have that without denying your culture or denying your, um, your, your lifestyle. You can have it in the midst of that. And that's what we're trying to do. And my challenge is to develop that innovative model of a genuine ashram in the ordinariness of English community. And how often do people come to the ashram well, remember, it's not a building, so so we don't we don't have a retreat house. Okay. Um, we are a grouping of people who meet regularly yeah. um, at my house, and we uh, provide retreats and study days that people come to, as well as um, keeping people in touch through uh, a journal that I that I write, and through um, the members of our community supporting one another. And what kind of difficulties do people have in terms of their practice? I think it's always, it's always interesting to, to know what people are going through in yeah. terms of practical situations in their life. I think all the things you're saying, surviving in the complexity and demand of the world is the challenge for people. And also because um, people who come into uh, this kind of thing are often quite sensitive. And gentle. Um, they actually are, are looking for, hoping for gentleness, kindness, decency, honesty. These are the tenets of yoga. But the world doesn't necessarily support that way of way of um, relating in mainstream society. It's more selfish rather than selfless. So people have. People find it difficult to survive and cope with all the demands. 